Hello everybody, I'm back to um, keep reading in our book, Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life. Um, today we're going to talk about Arthur's Purpose very quickly. Um, just a little review, Arthur's Purpose is um, to persuade, inform, or entertain. Let's talk a little bit about what that means. Authors write for mainly three reasons. Um, the first is to persuade, which is to get you to think or feel the way that they um, think or feel. And to inform is just to uh, give you some information on a particular topic. And to entertain is just to uh, write a funny story or a funny account to get you to um, read it and just enjoy it, okay? So... I think the author's purpose of this book is to entertain. That's what I think. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start with chapter four today. Chapter four. Ra, 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 yada, yada, yada. After homeroom, they'd usually ship us off to first period, but today was special. There was going to be a big school assembly to kick off the year and everyone was all excited about it. Of course, by everyone, I mean everyone but me. They herded us all into the gym and sat us down on the bleachers. There was a podium on the floor with a microphone and a big sign on the wall. Welcome to HVMS. The principal, Mr. Dwight, got up and spoke first. After a speech that went something like, welcome, blah, 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 lunch, Blah, 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 blah. And without further ado, blah. He brought out the cheerleaders, who brought out the football, soccer, and cross-country teams, who brought everyone to their feet, yelling and screaming. Of course, by everyone, I mean everyone but me. The only things missing were the circus tent and a couple of dancing elephants. And here's the picture of this so-called pep rally. That doesn't look like any pep rally that, or assembly that I've ever been to, does it you? A pep rally, maybe. There's a lot going on in that picture. Remember yesterday we, are, we were talking about Rafe, who is starting middle school. And so today is his uh, first day of middle school, and now he's done with this, at this assembly. After that part, Mrs. Stricker announced that anyone who wanted to run for student council representative should come down to the microphone and address the assembly. Five or six kids from every grade stood up like they'd been expecting this. I guess Mr. Rourke might have said something about it in homeroom, but I'd been too busy waiting for Miller to drive a pencil through the back of my neck. I hadn't paid attention to too much else. They started with the sixth graders first. We heard from two bozos who I didn't know, then a guy named Matt Krushik who ate his own boogers until fourth grade, and then Hi, everyone. I'm Janine Galetta. About half of the sixth grade and even some of the seventh and eighth graders started clapping right away. She must have gone to Millbrook Elementary because I'd never seen her before. I went to Seagrave Elementary where we chased rats in gym class and most of the kids got free lunch, including me. I think I'd be a good class representative because I know how to listen, Jean said, and there's nothing more important than that. I was listening, I was listening. She was pretty for sure. She had the kind of face that you just want to stare at for as long as possible. But she also seemed kind of cool, like she didn't think she was better than anyone else, even if she was. I have a lot of good ideas for how to make the school a better place, she goes on. But first, I want to do one thing. She leaves the mic and comes over right in front of where I'm sitting. Then she looks straight at me and says, are you Rafe? Suddenly, I'm feeling less about as talkative as Leo, but I managed to spit out an answer. That's me, I say. Do you want to maybe split a large fries in the cafeteria later? She asks. Sure, I'm buying, I say, because there's a $20 bill in my pocket that I just found that morning. No, she says, the fries are on me. Meanwhile, everyone's watching. The band starts playing, the cheerleaders start cheering. And Miller the Killer chokes to death on a peanut m and &M. Then I win the lottery. World peace breaks out everywhere, and Mrs. Stricker tells me that based on my all-around awesomeness, I could just skip sixth grade and come back next year. 
Do you think that's really happening? <laughs> Rafe, catch a Dorian. Please report back to Earth. So, I hope you'll vote for me, Jean was saying, and everyone started clapping like crazy. I never even heard most of her speech, but she definitely has my vote. So, here is a picture of Jean. French fries and world peace. You think that was a daydream he was having? Probably. <clears throat> Chapter 5. Those oh-so-cruel rules. The next girl to speak at assembly was Lexi Winchester. I knew Lexi from my old school, and she was a real nice kid. Still, Jean Galetta had my vote. Sorry, Lex. Once the speeches were over, I thought the assembly was done. No such luck. Mrs. Stricker came back to the microphone and held up a little green book so everyone could see it. Can you tell me what this is? Stricker said. Yeah, Miller the Killer mumbled somewhere behind me. A complete waste of time. This, Mrs. Stricker said, is the Hills Village Middle School Code of Conduct. Everything you need to know about how to behave at school and how not to behave is right here in this book. A bunch of teachers came around and started handing out a copy to each student in the gym. When you receive yours, open up to page one and follow along with me, Stricker said. Then she started reading really slowly. Section one, Hills Village Middle School Dress Code. When I got my copy, I flipped all the way to the back of the book. There were 16 sections and 26 pages total. In other words, we were going to be lucky to get out of this assembly by Christmas. All students are expected to dress appropriately for an, an, in, for an academic environment. No student shall wear clothing of a size more than two beyond his or her normal size. Help! That's what I was thinking about then. Middle school had just started and they were already trying to bore us to death. Please, somebody stop Miss Stricker before she kills again! Leo took out a pen and started drawing something on the inside of the back cover. Stricker turned to the next page and kept reading. <clears throat> Section 2, Prohibited Items. No student shall bring to school any electronic equipment not intended for class purposes. This includes cell phones, iPods, cameras, laptop computers. The whole thing went on and on and on and on by the time we got to section six grounds for expulsion my brain was turning into guacamole and i'm pretty sure my ears were bleeding too people always talk about how great it is to get older all i saw were more rules and more adults telling me what i could and couldn't do in the name of what's good for me yeah well asparagus is good for me but it still makes me want to throw up as far as I could tell, this little green book in my hands was just one long list of all the ways I could, and probably would, get into trouble between now and the end of the school year. Meanwhile, Leo was drawing away like the maniac he is. Every time Stricker mentioned another rule, he scribbled something else on the page in front of him. Finally, he turned it around and showed me what he was working on. Rules are made for breaking. And that is what he was drawing. Apparently, the rules say no weapons, no gum, <laughs> no electronics, no hats, all those. No clothes too big. Not funny. All I could think was, when I saw that picture, I want to be that kid. He looked like he was having a way better day than I was. And that's when I got my idea. My really stupendous, really, really big idea. It came on like a flash flood. This was the best idea anyone had ever had in the whole history of middle school. In the whole history of ideas. Not only was it going to help me get through the year, I thought it might also just save my life here at Hills Village. That is, if I had the nerve to actually try it. <clears throat> Chapter 6. Eureka! Did you ever hear the expression breaking every rule in the book? That was it. That was my big idea. Break every rule in the book. 
literally. The way I saw it, the HVMS code of conduct could be my worst enemy here at school, or if I played it right, I could turn it into my best friend. All it would take was a little bit of work and a ton of guts, maybe two tons. Leo knew exactly what I was thinking. The idea had come from his picture after all. Go for it, he whispered. Just pick something out of the book and get started. Right now, I whispered back. Why not? What are you waiting for, he said. And I guess the answer was, two tons of guts is what I was waiting for. I just kind of sat there, frozen, so Leo flipped open the book for me and pointed to something on the page without even looking down. When I saw where his finger landed, I almost started having a heart attack. Oh, I can't do that, I told him. What if someone gets hurt? How does this hurt anyone, Leo said, except maybe you. Uh, somehow that didn't make me feel any better. Listen, Leo told me, you're never going to be one of those people. He pointed at all the student council candidates and jocks and cheerleaders sitting on chairs that had been set up on the gym floor. But this, he said, thumbing the rule book with his pen, this is something you can do. I don't know, I tried lamely. Or, Leo said, you can keep going the way you're going and every day can be just like this one, he shrugged. It might not be so bad. There are only a, 180 days in a school year. Uh, that did it. Okay, okay, I said. And even though my heart was pounding out the Star Spangled Banner, I got up and walked over to where one of the prison guards, I mean teachers, was standing by the gym door. I need a bathroom pass, I told her. You can wait she said. Section eight, Stricker boomed over the microphone. We're halfway there. Please, I said, trying to look as much like a pants sweater as possible. The teacher gave a big sigh, like she wished she'd been a lawyer instead. Okay, five minutes, she said. Five minutes was more than enough. I went out to the hall and into the boys' bathroom while she was still watching me. Then I counted to ten and stuck my head out again. Nobody was around. As far as I knew, the whole school was inside that gym. It was now or never. I sprinted up the hall, around the long way behind the office, and then cut down another hallway through the cafeteria and into an empty stairwell into the back. By the time I found what I was looking for, I'd been gone for only a minute or two. I stood there, staring at the little red box on the wall. I could just hear Leo now, like he was right there. Don't think about it. Just do it. I flipped the latch, opened the wire cage around the alarm box, and put my finger on the little white handle inside. This was what you call the point of no return. My mission, should I choose to accept it, and all that. Still, was I crazy? Was I completely nuts for thinking I could pull this off? Yes, I told myself. You are. Okay, I thought. Just checking. And I pulled the alarm. There's the picture of his big plan. Oh, Rafe, it says. So we're going to have to wait till tomorrow to see um, what happens to Rafe. If he gets caught, if he gets in trouble, tune in tomorrow. Maybe at 2, maybe at another time. Look at the schedule. I hope everybody's well. See you later. Tomorrow.